All right, so before we get into this video, you know, I had addressed before whether or not I was going to do this uh, this early on because Crown Jewel has not been released. You know, there's no word on it yet. I don't personally think it's going to be released because of the controversy, but it very well could be. But if it is, I don't see it being released for a few months. So I'm going to film this video now. And if for some reason it does get released in the future, I will do another video adding it in. I will still talk about the pay-per-view, I just won't have the DVD in front of me. So let's get right into this. My personal favorite video of the year, every year to make. Let's get into it. Alright, what's up you guys? I'm here with the 2018 WWE pay-per-view DVD collection. Of course, this is my favorite video to do every year. And I've done 99 all the way up to 2018 now, so go ahead and check out that playlist. And like I said, once we get to Crown Jewel, I'll just go over the card, because obviously we don't have the DVD in front of us. And I honestly don't think it's going to be released. But if I'm wrong, I will refilm this and upload an updated version. So, first off we have the Royal Rumble 2018 pay-per-view. Now, some key differences this year. We have the Warner Brothers logo. We have minutes instead of hours for the runtime. And primarily, most of these are two disc sets. But this year at the Rumble, we had Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, and Kane. Triple threat match for the Universal title. A pretty bad match, in my opinion. And then we had the first ever Women's Rumble. As you can see on the cover here, we have the appearance of Ronda Rousey. And then the Women's Rumble down below. And both Rumble matches were really good. I thought the Men's Rumble was fantastic. The Women's Rumble was pretty good for their um, first time. And then we also had AJ Styles versus uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn for the WWE title. And this was a really good pay-per-view to kick off the Road to WrestleMania 34. And we have disc artwork somewhat which is another trend we had this year standard eco case and we do get a john cena trading card but like i said this was a great pay-per-view i really enjoyed this year's royal rumble next up we have the final double feature the elimination chamber and fast lane so for raw we had the elimination chamber you know we had oscar versus nia Jax. We had two chamber matches, including the first ever women's chamber match. Really cool artwork there. I like that. Very simple. And we had Sasha Banks, Bailey, Mickey James, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose for the Raw Women's title. And then we have the first ever seven man chamber match Roman Reigns, John Cena, Seth Rollins, Finn Balor, Elias, Braun Strowman, and The Miz for number one contendership. Moving down to fast lane, the final stop on the road to WrestleMania. You have AJ Styles there. Pretty cool. You know, it's different when you see a white background. And this was the SmackDown pay-per-view. We had the New Day versus the Usos. You had Charlotte versus Ruby Riot. Uh, Randy Orton versus Bobby Roode. Decent match. And then, of course, John Cena, Baron Corbin, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Dolph Ziggler. And uh, AJ Styles, of course, in a six-pack challenge for the WWE Championship. So, you know, Elimination Chamber was all right. Fastlane was surprisingly good. So, uh, give him credit for that one. Fastlanes usually suck. Next up, we have WrestleMania 34, which I was in attendance for. And we also got a Best Buy Blu-ray exclusive cover, which I prefer this cover a lot more over the DVD cover. But the standard DVD here, honestly, I miss the Digipacks. You know, I think everyone does. I, well, there's some people that don't. But, you know, WrestleMania has your standard jewel case with a slip cover. And a trend of including every wrestler on the roster, which we will get more into that later. 
But yeah, we have a good number of wrestlers on here. Very jam-packed, and you can see Bourbon Street in the background. You know, attending this live, you know, watching it live was a lot better than the pay-per-view itself. I say this is a very average WrestleMania. You know, on the bright sides, we had the triple threat match for the Intercontinental title. Seth Rollins, The Miz, and Finn Balor. Charlotte and Asuka was a great match. You had Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Really good match. You had the long-awaited Undertaker versus John Cena squash match. And then, of course, the main event, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Very lackluster main event. And then Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. Really not that great of a match. So, you know, the first half of this was fantastic, and it just kind of... I wouldn't say it tanked. It just went downhill. So, to me, this was a very average WrestleMania. And this was the first WrestleMania DVD since 2005 to not include the Hall of Fame. It instead included the Raw after WrestleMania due to runtime, basically. And then in the UK, you actually got NXT TakeOver New Orleans. So, congratulations, guys. The US, we didn't get that. But yes, we did get inserts, though. That's really cool. Well, insert. That's the only pay-per-view insert we got this year. But I'm really glad we got the insert for that. And then, of course, the stacked discs. As you can see. Not a fan of that. But it is what it is. Next up, we had, right after WrestleMania, the Greatest Royal Rumble. The first Saudi Arabia event. And I actually do like this cover a lot. Really cool shot of the stadium. Once again, there's a million wrestlers on the cover. But it kind of makes sense being it's a 50-man Royal Rumble. And I can show you the spine there. You have the cup up top there, or trophy. And then on the back here, just some different screenshots. We had Nakamura and AJ Styles again. We had a pretty good Fatal 4-Way ladder match. With uh, Samoa Joe, Seth Rollins, The Miz, and um, Finn Balor. And uh, we had Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns in a terrible steel cage match. Eh, I wouldn't say terrible, but it was not good. You know, really bad ending. It was botched. Undertaker versus Rusev in a coffin match. And then Triple H versus John Cena. And then, of course, we had the 50-man rumble. Which was good, you know, it's not the, you know, it wasn't better than the 2018 Rumble, but it was still decent enough. You know, I don't think it was boring or anything, so. You know, this pay-per-view, a lot of people really hated it. I don't hate it, but I don't necessarily like it. But, you know, it's definitely, it's a decent pay-per-view. But speaking of hating pay-per-views, here we are. Backlash 2018. Of course, the Raw and SmackDown dual-branded pay-per-views started here. Once again, no more Raw exclusives or SmackDown exclusives. Unfortunately, I did like those. I liked the double features. But you can see here, very generic cover. Together, for the price of one. Yeah, yippee. This was a hard pay-per-view to get through, watching live. And, you know, we had a good opener between The Miz and Seth Rollins, which is always nice. And then, of course, the main event, Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe. We had AJ Styles and Nakamura again. Daniel Bryan and Big Cass. You know, Alexa Bliss and uh, Nia Jax. So this was just not a good pay-per-view at all. And we had an AJ Styles card. And then your disc artwork, sort of. So yeah, not much to say about this at all. This was pretty bad pay-per-view. Next up we have Money in the Bank. This is the start of the two-disc uh, four-hour B pay-per-views. So yeah, even the B pay-per-views are four hours now. I actually really like this cover, though. Uh, this was a decent year for covers, and this one's a really good one. 
So, of course, we had both Money in the Bank ladder matches, men and women. And you have both your winners spoiled on the spine. This was a good pay-per-view. You had AJ Styles and Nakamura in a really good last man standing match. You know, finally their rivalry got good. You had Nia Jax and Ronda Rousey. And then we had Alexa Bliss cashing in after she won the Money in the Bank ladder match. Which featured Alexa Bliss, Naomi, Lana, Natalia, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and Ember Moon. And then we had the men's match. Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, Kofi Kingston, Kevin Owens, Bobby Roode, The Miz, and Rusev. So, you know, the women's ladder match killed it. I thought it was really good. And the men's ladder match was pretty good as well. I honestly think the women's ladder match was a little bit better, though. As opposed to last year, which we all know that one sucked. And then we have Charlotte as the card. And then your green and white disc artwork. Nothing too special to see. Next up, we had Extreme Rules. Uh, this was a very disappointing pay-per-view. Uh, it really was not extreme at all whatsoever. But good cover. I like that. We had AJ Styles and Rusev. For the WWE title, we had the 30-minute Iron Man match with Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. Um, Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley. We had Team Hell No returning, of course, to face the Bludgeon Brothers. So that was interesting. So yeah, and um, of course, Kevin Owens and Braun Strowman in the Steel Cage match. Which, um, the ending was cool, but... Why would you chuck your opponent off the steel cage? Because obviously Kevin Owens won then. Whatever. Yeah, this was not an extreme pay-per-view at all whatsoever. And we do have your disc artwork. And, you know, one good thing that came out of these two-disc sets was there was a lot of room for extras. So we did get a lot of extras. You know, just Raw and SmackDown segments. So I really do give them credit for that. So next up we have another pay-per-view I attended. You know, I attended NXT the night before this. You know, Brooklyn 4, which was very good. But SummerSlam 2018, my first SummerSlam in Brooklyn. You can see your wide array of superstars once again. You have New York in the background. So yeah, we had Daniel Bryan versus The Miz, finally. We had Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's title. Seth Rollins and um, Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental title. And then we had Demon Balor coming back, which is a really cool moment live. And, of course, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar to finish off the pay-per-view. This was... A good SummerSlam. Definitely not the best. But, you know, it was enjoyable. It had its moments. And then some moments obviously weren't that great. But you have your artwork there. And then your New Day card. So, yeah, this was a... It was a fun pay-per-view to go to. Alright. And they just all fell. Yeah, good enough. Next up, we have Hell in a Cell 2018. This was a really good pay-per-view. We have, you know, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman up top there. Kind of cheesy artwork, but I do like the colors in this. Very good cover. And, of course, Brock Lesnar making his way onto the cover, of course. Whatever. But, you know, we had the new Red Cell. I'm not really a big fan of the Red Cell, personally. I like the classic Cell. But we had, of course, Charlotte and Becky Lynch after the heel turn at SummerSlam. We have Alexa Bliss and Ronda Rousey there. AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, which was a good match. And then we have Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton in Hell in a Cell, which was a pretty good Hell in a Cell match. And then, of course, the main event was Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman in a Hell in a Cell match. I've ranted about that before. I'm not going to rant again. I think the... If you have a no contest in a Hell in a Cell match, that's just retarded. I was so pissed off at that. 
But we actually have disc artwork this time, which is nice. And a Braun Strowman card. Next up, we have Super Showdown. The last time ever. Undertaker versus Triple H in the main event. We had the Shield reuniting. And I, I do like this cover. Really cool shot of the stadium there down below. So, you know, this kind of felt like a glorified house show, to be honest. We had Becky versus Charlotte again. You know, we had a really good cruiserweight match with uh, Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy. We had the Riot Squad versus the Bella Twins. And then, of course, we had the Shield versus Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre. And, you know, this, like I said, very glorified house show. You had the return of John Cena. But we did have a good match with Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. And then your disc artwork. Next up, we have the Walmart exclusive release of Evolution, the first ever all-women's pay-per-view. This was better than I thought it was going to be, quite honestly. You know, you had Nikki Bell and Ronda Rousey in the main event. You had Charlotte and Becky Lynch in the first ever last woman's standing match. You had the Women's Battle Royal. And this is a really cool cover. I will give it that. So, yeah. And then we also had Trish Strass and Lita teaming up versus Mickey James and Alicia Fox. So, yeah, this is a really, um, really cool artwork. But, you know, like I said, it was a good pay per view. And then we have the disc artwork. And like I said, this was only released at Walmart. And I think it's going to be a pretty rare one day. So let's get into Crown Jewel real quick. So Crown Jewel was, you know, very well known for the Shawn Michaels in-ring return. Teaming with Triple H against Kane and The Undertaker. He had Braun Strowman versus Brock Lesnar for the Universal title after Roman Reigns had to relinquish it. And then he had this World Cup tournament. Um, you know, which saw Jeff Hardy, Rey Mysterio, Kurt Angle, Seth Rollins. And the finals, we had um, The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. But then The Miz got injured, and Shane McMahon basically came in and beat Dolph Ziggler to become the best in the world. I've done a review and a rant video on this, so there's not much more to be said. This was one of the worst pay-per-views of all time. You know, I say one of. I don't think it's the worst, but it's one of. So let's get back to the actual video with Survivor Series. So next we have my personal favorite pay-per-view of the year, unbiased. We have Survivor Series. We have Raw versus SmackDown. Two great, um, one great main event and then, you know, a great co-main event. We had Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte. Great match. We had Daniel Bryan and Brock Lesnar. Fantastic. You had a five-on-five five, um, for men and women. So we had Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, Bobby Lashley, and Finn Balor versus Shane McMahon, Jeff Hardy, Samoa Joe, Rey Mysterio, and The Miz. And then we had Nia Jax, Tamina, Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Mickey James versus Naomi, Carmella, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, and Asuka. And then we also had Seth Rollins and Nakamura. Pretty good match as well. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this pay-per-view. Obviously, some parts were better than others. But, you know, those two main events were great. I'll show you the spine. And we did have a Kurt Angle card. As well as... Your disc artwork. So yeah, great pay-per-view. And then finally, of course, we have TLC 2018. Really cool cover. I like that. It's very simple. Kind of feels old school. And this was a good way to end the year. You know, obviously it was not a good year. Um, you know, it's not the best year for pay-per-views. But this was a good way to end it. 
you have the tables, ladders, and chairs there on the side. You know, you had Nia Jax and Ronda Rousey. Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles for the WWE title. They killed it. That was a great match. Probably my favorite main roster match of the year. And then we had your triple threat TLC match. Charlotte, Becky Lynch, and Asuka. We also had Rey Mysterio versus Randy Orton in a chairs match. And then the Braun Strowman somewhat TLC match with Baron Corbin. And then in here we have a Seth Rollins card. And something interesting about this pay-per-view is it introduced... I think I have the wrapper here, yep. We have one card in every pay-per-view release, and there's a chance at a signature card. So if anyone found a signature card, please, you know, let me know. Because that's um, very interesting. And your artwork. So, you know, like I said, this is my favorite video to do every year. And here we have it. The final shot of the 2018 pay-per-view DVD collection. Let me know what your favorite pay-per-views were, what your least favorite pay-per-views were. And for now, this has been the DVD Freak. Peace out.